What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Today I'm building a dedicated Plex media server. I'm gonna go over some of the components that I use, why I chose those components, and the one key thing that I picked that's gonna allow me to expand my server in the future without any additional hassle. Building a Plex Media Server is simple. All you need is some basic components, your hard drives, your motherboard, CPU, and usually a case. But if you ever wanna build a Plex Media Server that's gonna allow you to expand in the future with ease, today I'm gonna to try to show you some of the things that you could keep in mind when you're shopping for a new computer. Now for me, when I shop for a new computer, I actually shop for two computers. And what I mean by that is I'm building, let's say, a new computer. I look for things that I'm gonna want in my secondary computer when I upgrade in the future. So let's go for an example, the motherboard that I'm using in today's build. I have a Gigabyte Sniper G3 motherboard. This motherboard I picked specifically because it had a lot of SATA ports, and I knew that I was gonna need a lot of additional storage with my computer, so I needed as many SATA ports as I could get. Now, you can always expand on a motherboard with additional SATA ports with PCI Express cards. However, it's just a lot easier to have them built straight in to the motherboard, not to mention it allows the device to boot a lot faster if you ever needed to restart it. Now the hard drive really just kind of depends on what the user's needs are. So for example, me, I have six Western Digital hard drives. Three of them are Western Digital red, two of them are greens, and one is a black. I know it's kind of a mix match situation for me right now, but I am in the process of getting all of them over to red and then hopefully upping my storage game as it were. But for right now, they're gonna serve me just fine. As for my boot drive, I have a Samson 850 Evo. Now I went with an SSD because I know that I don't actually need Windows operating system to run fast because I'm not gonna be using it as a daily computer. However, I do need the speed of an SSD to allow the transcoder to have no bottlenecks if it has multiple transcode sessions. You can definitely get away with a standard hard drive if you don't have a high amount of usage on your server. For me and my needs, I did go with an SSD just to make sure everything runs smoothly. To power everything, I have a Rosewill 850 watt power supply. Now this thing is probably five or six years old, still going strong, has all the Molex and SATA connections that I need. I have used splitters before, I've changed Molex to SATA connections before, everything was worked, no big deal whatsoever. But one key component that I picked to do this build specifically is going to be this case. When I was originally planning to build my dedicated Plex media server, I was just gonna throw everything into an old thermal take case that I had sitting in the closet. This was an okay idea. I mean, it held everything I needed. The only problem was is that it was limited to only holding six drives plus my boot drive. And in order to get the hard drives out of it, I had to almost take apart half of the computer just to get three of the hard drives away. So it wasn't really very easy to swap hard drives. And since it only held six hard drives, it was not expandable for me whatsoever. Basically, once I threw mine in there, that was it. I could not build upon it. If I wanted to change anything, I would either A, have a random hard drive just floating around in the case, or B, have to get a new case. So I decided to tackle this right off the bat. I got online. I was looking for a case that was gonna meet somewhere in the middle of a professional grade build with the expandability of a server chassis and have a semi-consumer price without being crazy expensive. And believe me, there are some really expensive server class cases out there. So I went on my quest to find the perfect case. I looked around, I found a lot of different options out there. Some kind of brutally expensive. They had what I needed, but just not worth it. And then I stumble upon the Rosewill RSV L4412 case. Now this was basically built to sit in a server rack environment. It has 12 external hot swap bays that's going to allow me to not only put all six of my hard drives in this computer and change them out or move them around with ease, but it's gonna give me six additional slots to fill up in the future for when I expand my server. I wanna give a huge shout out to Rosewill. I went online to find the perfect case and I found this one and this was it. I did not have a backup plan. This fit everything that I needed in the price range that I was looking for. I wanted a budget build, I wanted it to be expandable, and I wanted it to be a good, decent quality case. This was it. 
I contacted Rosewell, I told him what I was planning to do, and I asked them to sponsor this video by supplying this case and allowing me to build an expandable media server that would be dedicated. So they emailed me back, they said they'd be more than happy to sponsor my video. Here we are, I have this case, I'm gonna build this Plex media server, and I'm gonna show you how easy and simple this thing is gonna make it for me to expand my media server in the future without having to disassemble the entire computer just to add a hard drive. In the description, I'm gonna give you two links. One, taking you straight to Rosewell product specs for this particular case. The second link is gonna take you to Newegg, just in case you wanna check the current pricing if you're considering using this in your own Plex media server build. Okay, so I have to admit, I'm a little excited to go ahead and get this built. So I'm gonna jump right in, get this thing built. Before I do that, I'm gonna outline a few things that you should look at when you're shopping to build your own dedicated media server. Number one, look for the case that's gonna help you expand in the future. That's why I chose this one. It was relatively cheap and it holds 12 separate hard drives. That's gonna give me plenty of room to expand in the future. Number two, look for a motherboard with as many SATA ports that you can find. You can always expand on your motherboard with a piece PCI Express SATA extension card if you want to, but if you have more SATA ports on your motherboard, you won't have to worry about buying additional hardware to support more hard drives. Number three, you definitely want to look for the correct size and price of hard drives that you need. Of course, everybody wants eight terabyte enterprise class hard drives, but they're pretty expensive and you may not need that. For me, I go with four terabyte drives because I feel like they're a good price point and they're a good amount of storage for one used SATA port. On my motherboard, I picked this motherboard specifically because I knew that I was going to turn it into a server as soon as I was done with it. I like this motherboard because, because it had onboard video. That means that if I wanted to turn it into a server and if I needed to hook up a monitor to it, I would not need to throw a video card in it. So that was one huge thing that's not only going to allow me to save power, but also keep the inside clean without any kind of additional hardware draining power. And as for my power supply, well, I have an 850 watt. Believe me when I tell you this is overkill. I could easily get away with a 400, 500, probably somewhere around there power supply. 850 watts is overkill, but this is what I have, so this is what I'm gonna use because there's no reason to go out and buy a separate power supply just because it's a lower wattage. Last but not least, your primary boot drive. I always recommend an SSD. Even if you have to go with something as small as maybe 120 gigabyte, that's okay. You just have to run an SSD so Plex does not get bottlenecked by all the transcoding and the users browsing the poster arts while they're using their Plex. Something like that can easily slow you down and give you a bad experience when you're trying to watch TV. Well, I think that's enough talking for now. Let's jump right in. Oh, 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 oh,